created by nurses for nurses. Hello everybody and welcome to the NRSNG YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about uh, beta blockers. We're going to talk about what beta blockers are, why they're given, and some of the side effects and uh, nursing considerations when, when giving beta blockers. Okay, so if you want to uh, download this presentation and view a uh, special handout about beta blockers, you can go to nrsng.com slash beta. What we'll have on there is we'll have uh, some of the handouts from this presentation specifically discussing what are beta blockers, why they're given, and, and you can have that. It'll be a PDF file that you can download for free. So go ahead and go to nrsng.com slash beta and you'll be able to get that. Okay, when talking about beta blockers, first and foremost what we need to talk about is we need to talk about the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, so we need to understand what exactly is being blocked, right? All right, so with beta blockers, there we go. So with our sympathetic nervous system, what we have here is we have several different actual receptor sites. So with our sympathetic, there we go, sympathetic nervous system, or the SNS. What we're basically talking about is our fight or flight system, okay? So the sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight uh, response. And what we have is we have several different receptor sites in various locations throughout the body that respond to adrenaline and neuroadrenaline. And when they are uh, stimulated by adrenaline and neuroadrenaline, they have this fight or flight response. Okay, so that is our sympathetic nervous system, SNS, or fight or flight uh, system. So what we have here is we have alpha receptors. We have a couple of those, alpha 1, alpha 2. We also have beta receptors, beta 1, 2, and 3. We're not going to really talk about 3 at all. Um, and then we also have dopaminergic receptors. So what happens is when there is a stimulus, uh, you know, a, a lion jumping out at you, a test coming up, uh, cute girl, cute boy, whatever, what will happen is you'll, you'll, this uh, SNS will be stimulated and you'll have that fight or flight response. And that's going to stimulate um, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2 uh, receptors. Okay, So that's what's going to happen there. So specifically we need to talk about um, what are beta receptors, okay? So beta receptors, so we have, we have beta receptors, right? Okay. So we have beta 1 and we have beta 2. Okay, so our beta 1 receptors are found primarily in our heart. Okay, so we have these beta 1 receptors and what they do is they're basically in charge of heart rate, contractility, and, and conduction of the heart. Okay, so they're going to act on the SA node and the AV node and they're going to affect heart rate conduction and uh, contract uh, contraction in the heart. So that's our beta 1. The beta 2 receptors on the other hand are found primarily in the lungs and what they're going to deal with is they're going to deal with like uh, bronchodilation. Okay so when the beta 1 receptors are stimulated you're going to see an increased heart rate, increased conduction, increased contractility. When beta-2 receptors are stimulated, you're going to see bronchodilation. Okay? So an easy way to remember this is beta-1, okay, you have one heart. Beta-2, you have two lungs. Okay, so actions of the beta receptor include, now this is specific to the heart, actions of beta-1 receptors within the heart they're going to increase cardiac output. They're going to do that a couple ways. They're going to do that by increasing the heart rate in the SA node. That is referred to as a chronotropic effect. So chronotropic, chronological, think time. It's going to increase heart rate. It's going to increase atrial contractility. So contractility is inotropic effect. 
Um, with that, just remember digoxin is a positive inotrope, so it's going to increase that contractility. It's also going to increase conduction automaticity of the AV node. And it's going to increase um, conduction automaticity of the ventricles. Okay, so that's that's basically what uh, what beta blockers or beta receptors are. Okay, so we're, when we're talking about beta blockers, usually we're referring to beta one. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today, anyway. We're going to be talking about beta one receptor blockers. Okay, now you remember the beta one receptors are found in the heart. And we saw that they that what beta one receptors do when they're acted upon they increase heart rate increase contact contractility, um, et cetera. And so what happens is when we give beta one receptor blockers, what we're doing is we're blocking that action. Okay, so we're stopping the central nervous system that fight or flight response from being able to increase the heart rate and the contractility and everything. Okay, so that's really what's happening here. Okay, is we're we're saying to the SNS, no, you cannot stimulate those beta-1 receptors. Okay, so that's really kind of what's happening. Now, what are some um, beta blockers that you're going to be giving? Okay, some of the common beta blockers are going to be like propranolol um, and metoprolol. Okay, and a, a good way to remember beta blockers are this LOL ending. Okay, so beta blockers our LOL. Okay. Generally, that's what you're going to see with the beta one blockers. You're going to see the propanolol, metoprolol. Um, there's a few other like esmolol that are given. And so, what you just really need to remember are they going to end in that L uh, LOL? Okay. And so, what these are going to do is we have we also have cardio selective and non cardio selective. Okay. So, what's going to happen here is these are going to uh, decrease our heart rate, um, and they're gonna they're gonna help uh, help uh, just kind of decrease that rate. That's kind of what we're looking for is that negative chronotrope uh, effect there. Okay, so now a lot of people will ask, well, won't uh, beta blockers decrease blood pressure? Okay, well, beta blockers are going to have an effect on blood pressure, right? Because what we're doing is we're decreasing our cardiac output okay by decreasing our heart rate so as we decrease our cardiac output by decreasing the heart rate we are going to see a small drop in blood pressure okay we have less volume going through we're decreasing the rate there's going to be a resulting decrease in blood pressure but you remember that the, that their primary effect is not on blood pressure so while you're going to see a, a minor decrease in blood pressure that's not their met that's not their goal their goal is to decrease our heart rate. So sometimes it can be given to help decrease uh, blood pressure just a bit. But remember we have our alpha-1 receptors which are found in the vessels and their job is to vasoconstrict. So what we'll usually do to, to really decrease our blood pressure is we're going to give an alpha uh, receptor blocker. Something like uh, nicardipine or something like that that's going to really directly affect the vessels. Okay, beta blockers are not affecting these alpha-1 receptors, they're working just on our beta receptors. Okay, so beta blockers are given, they block the beta-1 receptors, they're decreasing cardiac output, decreasing heart rate, and uh, that's really going to be our goal is to get our heart rate down. So what you're going to want to do, you're obviously going to be wanting to um, assess your patients pretty often here, because we there's going to be a certain, uh, usually it's there. there's parameters written with the medication. It'll be uh, do not give if heart rate is less than 60. For example, we don't want them to go too bradycardic and uh, mess up the conduction system or anything like that. So you want to monitor your patient's heart rate. You also want to monitor their blood pressure. A lot of times there'll be parameters written to not give uh, for systolic um, under 120 or so. So you're going to monitor these two things before and after giving the medication. Um, and some of the other side effects are um, that it can actually mask blood blood sugars. Um, so what's going to happen with type 1 diabetics is it can actually uh, result in like a hypoglycemia with uh, di diabetics, type 1 diabetics. Uh, and with type 2 diabetics, it can actually cause um, these metabolic abnormalities and lead to hyperglycemia with uh, type 2 diabetics. 
Uh, this is really metoprolol specifically. Okay, so let's just uh, let's kind of write this out here. So the side effects you're going to really see are going to be that you want to watch for are going to be brady, bradycardia. Okay, bradycardia, decreased blood pressure. Again, that's going to happen as a result of decreasing the cardiac output and heart rate, not necessarily from the vasodilation or anything like that. Um, we could also see bronchoconstriction. Remember, that's not. So when we're giving these cardio selective beta, beta blockers that are really focusing just on the beta 1, you're not going to see this too much, but you will want to monitor for that, for that bronchoconstriction. Okay, and then we're also going to see uh, alterations in blood sugars. Okay, bradycardia, blood pressure, bronchoconstriction, blood sugars. So beta blockers, you got four Bs for your side effects. Bradycardia, decreased blood pressure, bronchoconstriction, blood sugars. Um, now again, we're talking about our beta one receptor blockers, so we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we'll see this as a result of what we're giving the medication for. And this bronchoconstriction shouldn't really happen with your cardioselective beta blockers like metoprolol. Okay, so that's really just a basic introduction to what beta blockers are. Um, if you have questions, we invite you to contact us. You can contact me. This is John. You can contact me at contact at nrsng.com. And be sure to go to nrsng.com slash beta for a handout about this lecture and a handout over beta blockers. We appreciate you watching, and please uh, leave us some comments and let us know how we can help you out. Thank you. Visit us at nrsng.com for disclaimer information and to keep the learning going.